Hi, we have been learning about elastic materials and we have learned the concepts of stress, strain, what is Young's modulus, how elastic materials behave when Hooke's law is valid and so on. But a lot of very interesting information can be got about that material if we look at the stress strain curve for that particular material. Let us try and understand how the stress strain curves of metallic wires behave or look like by looking at this metal rod. Okay, So, I am going to pull on this metal rod. The natural length, when I am not pulling on this metal rod, the natural length of this metal rod, let us say is L0. Okay? I am going to draw the strain on the x axis and stress on the y axis. So, we are going to have the strain here and the stress there. The curve that we are going to draw is called the stress strain curve. I am going to look at this rod. I am going to keep pulling and as I am pulling, you can see that this rod is going to extend. Now, the extension will be delta L. Strain is delta L by the original length L0. Now, of course, I have drawn this in such a way that I have scaled it to unit length. The actual length can be something else, but I can draw this to scale, right? So, suppose I have drawn it to a scale of 1, then delta L by 1 well, that will be exactly equal to the strain. So, whatever you are seeing as extension, remember you are going to divide by L0, but it will give you a good idea of the strain. So, if you think in these terms, then we will be able to understand the stress strain curve very easily. Let us start. When obviously the strain is 0 and the stress is 0, that is basically this origin, right? You can see that at this point, there is no force. So, what is the stress? 0, right? No force means stress is 0. What is the extension 0? So, strain is also 0. So, the origin correctly matches here. Now, what I am going to do is I am going to apply a force F, a small force. Now, if I apply a small force, what is going to happen? Well, it is going to elongate this rod, right? So, this rod will elongate like that. So, this is delta L. Delta L by L0 will be the strain. But I told you that I have drawn this, keeping this as 1, right? I can scale it such that it is 1 does not actually have to be 1, but I have drawn it with a scale of 1, right? Or you can say that the graph is drawn with this scale being 1. So, that means this divided by 1, well, that is going to give you the strain. So, this will be the strain value. So, I can draw the strain value. And this force divided by the cross section area will give me the stress value. So, this point here, well, it tells us both the stress and the strain. Now, you know that for small forces, stress is directly proportional to strain, that is Hooke's law. So, that means you are going to get a straight line from the origin to this point, right? So, this is how the curve is going to look for small forces. And suppose I release this force, what is going to happen? The moment I release this force, stress is going to become 0. Strain will also become 0. Strain becomes 0, does that mean that this is going to go back to 0? No. It will go back to being L0. Okay? So, when I remove the force, this is how it is going to go back along that line. And you can see that this rod has come back to its natural length. Remember, strain being 0 does not mean that the length is 0. Strain being 0 means it has come back to its original length. Delta L is 0. Strain is delta L by L0. L0 is the length. Delta L has become 0. So, it has come back to being L0. Okay. Now, what if I applied a larger force? Well, larger force basically will mean that it is going to extend more, which will mean that it is actually going to have larger strain, larger strain. And of course, because I have increased the force, it also means it is going to have larger stress. So, this point represents this force. Therefore, it represents that much force by area, which means that much stress. It also represents a larger strain. That is why it is little bit further up along the line. And suppose I remove the force, well, then it is going to come back, okay, back to L0. Perfectly elastic material, right? Okay. What if I apply even larger force? Well, then it is going to extend even more. And now I am going to say that it has gone to the maximum limit of Hooke's law, right? 
so that point i'm going to call it as a that point i'm going to call it as a so this is now the strain value so you can see that now notice that this is a straight line oa is a straight line so hooke's law is valid because what is hooke's law telling us stress is directly proportional to strain but a straight line passing through the origin you know that stress must be proportional to strain straight line passing through the origin y is equal to mx so basically y is proportional to x in this case stress is proportional to strain which means stress by strain is a constant right sigma by epsilon is a constant we know that that constant is called y young's modulus basically young's modulus comes straight from hooke's law right but please remember hooke's law is only valid for the oa region hooke's law is valid when the stress is small enough and what is the largest value for which it is valid this value so that is at a so this a is giving us the maximum possibility for this proportionality so we can call this proportional limit this point a is called the proportional limit we can also call it the hooke's law limit basically hooke's law is only valid from o to a so we can also call it hooke's law limit how much is the stress for this a well the stress value i call this sigma h h for hooke's law limit right so this is the sigma value at a which is sigma h okay now the question that comes up is what if i increase the force well if you increase the force okay so i'm making this a little larger then it will extend further but hooke's law is only valid till here so it was a straight line from o to a so now when you increase this will still definitely become longer so that means you are going to have this much strain but it won't go as a straight line it is going to go as a curve so from a to b it is non linear curve o to a is linear a to b is non linear curve now this b also has a name now this point b is the limit up to which if you release the force it will come back to its original length so that means we can call it the elastic limit this b is called the elastic limit please remember a till a it is definitely elastic but it is even elastic up to b except till a it is proportional stress is proportional to strain but from a to b stress is not proportional to strain because this is a non linear curve but it is still elastic if you release it will come back it is also called b has another name it is called yield point elastic limit tells you that from o to b if i release it it will come back anywhere if i release it it is going to come back yield point is talking about what will happen afterwards because at b if you cross b then this rod gets permanently deformed till b if you release it it will come back so it is not permanently deformed it is deformed only when there is a force when you remove the force it will come back yield point tells you that after this if you do something if you pull it a little more then it will be permanently deformed so yield point is usually the common term used for this elastic limit is another term that is used and the amount of stress that you can apply will obviously be the force divided by area this stress we call it as sigma y y stands for yield point so once you cross this what is going to happen once you cross this it will no longer come back to the original length okay that's why b is important b is the elastic limit now o to b right o to b is called the elastic region okay so right now this point right b if i release the force what is going to happen well it is going to come to a and then it's going to go to o it is going to go back to o so it's going to go smoothly from b to o but basically i just showed you that it is going to trace back this exact same path now o to b is called the elastic region there are two sub regions o to a is the linear region a to b is the non linear region but o to a is also elastic a to b is also elastic o to a has an additional property that it is proportional stress is proportional to strain so hooke's law is valid so all these young's modulus calculations that we can do they are all valid in the o to a region but it is elastic all the way from o to b so o to b is called the elastic region this is oa that is a linear part ab is the non linear part now comes the question suppose 
I increase the stress beyond sigma y. What happens after B? Right? What will happen if I increase the stress level beyond sigma y? So what will the curve look like after B? Let us look at that. Thank you.